Hello. So I had a couple of questions here recently about breadboarding uh, with the last DIY stuff I was doing. I wanted to show you real quick, I found a piece of software that allows you, allows me to kind of show you how to breadboard a simple circuit. And so we're gonna try to do this. The software kind of works a little bit, so uh, bear with me and uh, hopefully it doesn't get too confusing. Now before beginning, if you have a breadboard, now's the time to break it out. If you don't have a breadboard, just kind of watch this and hopefully you understand kind of how it all works. The whole idea is basically it allows you to build a circuit quickly and easily without soldering anything. You will need a couple guitar jacks and a little bit of wire. You will need to solder some wires to those jacks and to a potentiometer. You'll need a maybe 100K or 500K potentiometer as well. Let's jump right into it. Okay, so this is a basic breadboard. Let me explain how this works. This line here, these are all connected. This line here, these are all connected. Same thing on the other side as well. The parts in the middle, each row is connected. So that row is connected, next row is connected, next row is connected this way, all the way across. Same thing for this side as well. So what that means is if you put a wire in here, it's going to have zero resistance between here and here and here in here, basically meaning that it's connected. Let's create a simple circuit. Now, this is software uh, I found online, 123.circuits.io, and it's a pretty basic like breadboard type program. I have a couple of basic components that one might use to do this. So what I'm going to do is just create a real simple JFET type of circuit, just something that's going to increase the volume of a guitar signal, for example, and how you would breadboard that. So the first thing I want to do, this is my power supply showing a battery. You can use a regular power supply if you want, uh, just connecting the positive and the negative in the same way. I will have a wire going from the battery snap to that dot right there. And again, it could be any one of these right here. It's just uh, closest to the battery, easier to draw that way connect the negative wire to the other row. Okay, now what that does, that means this whole row here, this top row, that's now ground, okay? And this row here, that's all nine volts, positive voltage, DC voltage. If you're using op amps, for example, or even just if you need this side of the board, it's easier a lot of times to pull power or ground from here as well. So a lot of times we'll just create a jumper going from one positive side to the other, and same thing with ground. So those are just jumper wires, okay? So now this row is positive, and now this row is negative simply because we jumpered, well, first we connected power to this side, then we jumper wired to the other side. So that puts power and ground at both sides of the breadboard, okay? Now, of course, we need to get a guitar signal in and out. So I don't, I didn't see a jack on here. So I'm going to assume you know how to wire a basic jack. If not, then maybe I can show in, a, in an upcoming video. Basically, on a mono jack, there is a ground lug and a positive lug. The positive being what the signal would carry through. Here's a basic jack, all right? Now, if you look at it, see that how that ring inside is connected to this tab? Well, that one's, that means that this lug that's connected to that tab inside is going to be ground. And this other one, which connects to this, is going to be, that's going to be your positive. So if you're wiring this up for a breadboard, your guitar cable is going to plug into that, obviously. This wire is going to go into uh, the input or the output, since we'll need two of these, one for the in and out. And then the ground is just simply going to go to the ground on the breadboard, any of those holes. So let's move on. Okay, so once again, I showed you how the jack works. So you have a wire coming from the ground lug of the jack. The ground of that jack is going to go into this row here or the other one. And again, all the grounds connect together. Eventually it goes back at, you know, it's connected to the ground on the battery. So your guitar jack, we just wired up with a ground and a positive, right? So the ground is going to go into this row that's connected to the ground of the battery. This row right here, or the opposing row on the other side. Either one, as long as it's the row, as long as it's the negative. So, or the ground, same thing in this case. The positive, uh, let's just run it, let's run it into any of these rows right here. The positive wire from the jack, and I know it's connecting to a resistor, it's because there were, there's not a jack on this program for whatever reason. So I need something to connect it to. So just 
act like this resistor is the positive lug of that jack, okay? I know that's, hopefully that's not gonna confuse anyone too awful much. So that's where your guitar signal's coming in, into right here. Now, let me grab some components real quick, hang on. So now I'm going to make a JFET circuit. For some reason, there wasn't a JFET in this style of casing, so I had to use an NPN transistor. So ignore the N, ignore the markings on there. Let's just call this a JFET since they both look exactly the same. Okay, a J201 is what I'm going to uh, pretend this is. I'll put it, uh, let's put it just somewhere right here. The, the legs of the, of the uh, JFET are in three different rows. I need a capacitor and probably, uh, probably a resistor of some sort going to this um, JFET to the input of it. For the J201s, I'll connect it here. And for the purposes of this, this little demonstration, it doesn't really matter if you use the capacitor first or the resistor first. I tended like to use the uh, capacitor first for this simple, simple circuit. Take this capacitor here. Let's make it a 0.022. Let's just, uh, if you're digging through your parts, so we'll connect it right there. See how the wire is going in this row? The first pin of this capacitor is going in this row. All right, so I have a capacitor first coming from the guitar signal. Let me take this resistor and I'll connect. So one leg, one leg of the resistor is in parallel, or in other words, in the same row as the one leg of the capacitor. Now we need a jumper wire to get from here over to this leg. So what we'll do is click on this row. So now, our jumper wire is attached to this leg. So now we have, we're, our signal is going to this capacitor and then comes out the other side of the capacitor which attaches to the resistor, goes through the resistor, and then the sound continues through this jumper, this little uh, jumper wire to this first pin here. Now this pin here, this middle pin, we can make it um, several different values. Uh, really depending on like what frequency response you want, how much gain you want. So I'm just going to use, I'm going to get uh, quite a bit of gain out of it and I'm just going to use a 1K um, and you'll see at the input there I have a 1K as well. You can make that bigger if you want. 1K is fine for most stuff for, as a booster um, with a JFET circuit. That resistor that's on this middle pin here, we really need to attach one end of it from here to ground. Now I don't think this breadboard software will allow me to do that so what I can do is run that resistor this way and then connect it to ground. So this resistor let's connect one end of it to uh, to the ground and of course the other end is going to go to a hole right there. So we're going to take a jumper wire since this whole row is connected and we're just going to go all the way to that middle pin. So let's move this transistor up a little bit so we can see what we're doing a little bit easier. So now you can see everything a little bit closer. So once again, this middle pin, we're gonna take a jumper wire and go from there to the row that this resistor is in. Of course, this resistor goes to ground. Uh, now we need to get power to this resistor as well. So one end is going to the power to the power side here. Again, we'll need a jumper wire to get it to connect to this pin. Now, here's here's the tricky part. This resistor is actually going to change. It shows it's a 1K here. It's probably gonna be more around a 15K, if I had to guess. But the way you need to actually do it is you need to take your multimeter, put it on a DC voltage setting, and you're gonna take the black pin of your multimeter it has two probes on a multimeter. You have a black probe and a red probe. Take the black probe and just touch like this end of the resistor that's going into ground just so that's that's holding ground. And with the red probe, you're going to touch this pin with the red probe and read what it says. And what you're going to actually do is you're going to adjust this resistor size until what you see on your voltmeter says 4.5. So what that means is it might be a 15K, it might be closer to an 18K or a 22K, or it could even be something more like a 12K resistor. Now it doesn't have to be exactly 4.5 volts. 
I don't like to go below that, but I usually say the magic area is about 4.5 to 5 volts. So now the transistor's working, but we need to get sound out of it, right? So what we're going to do is take capacitor. Remember, we have that jumper wire here, a jumper wire that goes from here to here and connects to that resistor. So on one side of this capacitor, it's going to more or less be connected to this pin. And from this pin, that's where your sound's coming out. From this pin, that's where you'll connect your other jack that you should have wired up. And that part goes to your guitar amplifier. You'll have your wire that connects to your other out, your output jack, the jack that goes to your amplifier. Let me just connect it to a resistor real quick because it won't let me uh, won't let me leave it in midair. So again, here's your input wire. Here's your output wire. Now on your jack, like I said before, both of your black wires are connected to ground. So they're connected to this row here. They're connected to the ground that the battery ground is connected to. Whenever you connect this breadboard to your amplifier, just a bit of a warning, it's going to be very loud compared to your regular guitar signal because we have not put a volume pot or anything in there just yet. So if we do want a volume pot, let's just get, let's not plug in that output jack yet. Here's our capacitor that's, that's the sound is coming out of this JFET from, right? Here's a potentiometer. This is as if you were looking at it, you know, over the top of it, just like, just like you would have like in a pedal or something. So you'll see these lugs here, right? Now, if you are using a pot that is not made for a PCB board mount, in other words, it's got little round holes that you attach a wire to, same idea, you'll just have wires coming from it. In fact, rather than plugging it into this, I will just, I will pretend that we are using that type of potentiometer. So what we're gonna do is this third lug here, the one on the, on the right, that's going to connect to the other side of this capacitor, okay? This lug here, the one on the far left is going to connect to ground. And now there's one lug left, right? So that lug, you're going to connect it to, just, just connect it to a random hole, doesn't matter where. And now you're gonna connect your output jack, positive wire, that we just spoke about. Now that is going to connect to one of these holes here. Because like we said, this whole row, or each row is connected right here. So your output jack positive wire is gonna connect here and it's gonna run out to your jack. And now your potentiometer is now your volume knob. So I noticed when we're viewing this video before uh, I was getting ready to make it live that I forgot a resistor. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna have my uh, amazing video guy, Bob, sneak this in for you guys. Basically, we have the entire circuit here except for this one resistor that I forgot. This is a one meg resistor and it's going to connect basically right here. What that means is one pin of this resistor is going to connect to the same pin that you're basically the input of the, of the FET, right? And then from the other end of the resistor, it's just simply going to ground. Just a wire that goes to ground. All right, so here's the basic schematic. Your input, your input wire, your positive input wire goes here. Goes through this capacitor, then goes to the resistor. Here's that resistor to ground right before that JFET, right before the input of that JFET. Then you have the 1K resistor to ground. So this resistor here is the one that's actually going to, uh, this R5 is the one that's going to change depending on the voltage, depending on your bias. That's the one that you have to bias at 4.5 to 5 volts with your multimeter. The signal goes out through C4 from this, it exits the JFET, goes through this capacitor. Then here's that volume pot. And you'll notice these grounds here, these triangles, they're actually all connected as you saw on the breadboard. So even though it shows them as totally separate things, it's just one big ground. Everything's all connected there at the ground. So your input wire goes here, your output wire goes there. Just like on the breadboard circuit, your input goes into this. Here's your cap, here's your resistor that goes in. Here's that one meg that goes to ground. Here's that 15K, that's what I put on there. It's 15, 22K. That's, it usually is around that area with most JFETs, J201s. This 1K to ground is that 1K resistor at the bottom of that JFET. Here's your volume pot, of course, and uh, there's the output that is your guitar signal is gonna go to. Okay, now I didn't really talk about what size potentiometer. I'd like to use probably a 500K or a 100K. This is a 500K. These are the lugs I was talking about, how 
the wire just connects directly you know you wrap your your wire around that and you solder your wire to that much like you did the jack so you will need to solder that stuff up but that potentiometer on there is basically looking at it like this so the one on the left connects to ground the one on the right connects to that capacitor the one on the middle is the one that goes to your output jack and that's the gist of breadboarding. It's basically how it works. It allows you to build a circuit very quickly and easily without soldering that much. If you have any questions or comments, please comment below. And uh, we'll see you in a couple days.